Hi there, it's Gabriel here, SEO manager at Hike SEO. And in this video, we'll be talking about image alt text and why your images need alternative text for optimal image optimization and SEO. All right, let's dive in. So what you'll learn in this video is what is image alt text and why is it important for your image SEO as well as your overall SEO performance. You'll learn how to actually add it to your image code uh, or your images. And then we'll go into some alt text examples, what are good alt texts, what are not so good alt texts and different variations. Um, and then we'll go through some of the best practices around image alt text as well. So what is image alt text? Well, it's basically also known as image alt tags or alt descriptions uh, or alternative text or alternative descriptions, things like that. So there's different variations uh, for it. Um, it's basically an alternative description of an image in text form. Obviously, images are visual. It doesn't necessarily have text in the image itself, uh, but this is like description of it in words. Um, and it's an accessibility feature to users with visual impairments who may be using screen readers to browse web pages because they may, might not be able to read on the screen. So here's an example um, on Apple. Um, basically, I highlighted one of the images, and if you look at the code here, the alt text uh, is iMac front exterior, white display border, blue exterior, and aluminum stand. Now, if you were to visualize that, you could pretty much come up with an image in your head about how what that image is about, right, without looking at it. And that's what the whole purpose of image alt text is. So why is image alt text important? Well, I think I hinted at it already, but basically accessibility is the main reason. Um, according to the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines 1.0 published by W3C in 1999, um, these are one of the, this is one of the outlined strategies for improving content accessibility for users with disabilities. Um, and one of them is to provide alternative equivalents to both auditory and visual content. Um, so alt text is part of that um, to roll that out on the web. Next is user experience. So some users actually may have low bandwidth internet connections. And what happens is sometimes these images on web pages may not load and show a broken link image link icon instead. And, but with alt text, it will show the description of what that image is about. So they understand what the image should look like uh, instead. So it doesn't necessarily um, you know, show the image, but at least the person can understand what the image is there and the context of it. Next is image visibility. So image alt text can also increase the visibility for images in Google Image Search or image packs in the SERPs. Um, image packs are a feature that displays a horizontal row of images related to the search query that you just put in. And this is really great to gain visibility. And it's a useful feature when people are looking um, and browsing on Google. So this provides users with a quick access to selection of images that are relevant to their search term. And for those images that are displayed there, they get additional visibility. So how do you actually add image alt text on your website? Good question. So if you're using a CMS or content management system, usually there's a field provided to enter the alt text for that image. Um, and sometimes this field is automatically filled when you upload an image uh, based on the file name or any other metadata that's within the file. Um, so it's automatically usually filled in for you. But if you add an image manually uh, through code or HTML, uh, then the alt text can easily be added within the image code. So here's an example. So uh, the bolded text here is the actual image alt text and there's an alt attribute in there and that's where that text would go. So here's some image alt text examples. So here we're going to be talking about the, a non-specific but detailed alt text. So here's an image of London uh, skyline. So the alt text here is city skyline with skyscrapers at dusk 
with pink and blue sky. But we don't know necessarily what city unless you've been there and recognize it right away. And machines, um, the Google and other search bots might not know either because their AI might not be that advanced to actually identify that city. Um, so it just thinks of it as a city, skyline with skyscrapers, which is pretty generic, non-specific. It is detailed. You can visualize it um, to a certain extent, but it's not, uh, not very specific. So then a specific and detailed alt text would be London, UK, skyline with the shard and gherkin visible at dusk with pink and blue sky. And if you're not sure what uh, the shard and gherkin are, there are two skyscrapers there. They've been named. Um, and basically that will give a more specific image of what is in that photo. Uh, and that's useful for context, for keywords, things like that. So the explanation for that is uh, by providing specificity, like I showed you, uh, like naming certain locations or landmarks um, or objects within there, um, that will improve the alt text relevance and help with image visibility in the search results. Um, so always try to be more, always try to be specific and detailed when you're writing your alt text. So here's another example. Um, so this is detailed, but there's no context. So golden retriever dog with a blue tennis ball and mouth with the word chew on it. Okay, but in what context? There's just a dog there with a ball. Um, so we're wondering, okay, what does that actually mean in, in context of the page and the topic, etc. So here's detailed with context example. So training a golden retriever dog to play catch with a blue tennis ball in his mouth. So that's a lot more uh, specific as to what context. So this is probably on a blog article or a page or website about dog training or golden retriever dog training, um, something like that. So if this image is on a page or blog article about training golden retrievers to play catch, then the first example, like, like I showed you, doesn't provide enough context to relate to that topic, while the second one explains the context so it can show up for relevant search results. And also for people with disability, visual impairments can actually um, visualize it in much more detail because the context is correct. So alt text best practices. So firstly, we already discovered that we want to be specific about the image details and the context. So based on not just what you're seeing in the image, but taking the context in mind and being very specific about what is in there. So for example, if the image is of a woman holding a cup of coffee, um, but it's within an article about business, then it would be more specific to say that the image is of a businesswoman holding a cup of coffee in an office environment. You see what I mean? So it's pretty, pretty much the same thing, but more more context to it and more relevant to the topic that the article, the page, the keyword is about. Keeping alt text short is really important. Um, while it's important to be specific, you don't want to make the alt text too long. So try to keep it under 125 characters in length if possible. And this also forces you to be super clear and concise. Well, while still being detailed and specific about the image. So it's a good balance between length and detailedness and spe specificity as well. Try to avoid starting with picture or image of, <laughs> because that's just stating the obvious and it's unnecessary because web crawlers already know this is an image based on the file uh, format. So this redundant text could rather be replaced with a few more details about the image instead. Try to use keywords sparingly. So if the image is relevant to the target keywords of the page, then feel free to use them naturally uh, within the alt text. But um, try not to stuff in keywords just for the sake of doing that. You can use semantic variations of the keyword, meaning like you can use variations of that same meaning of that phrase. Um, so it doesn't feel forced into the alt text. It's just naturally occurring. Remember to check for spelling errors. I mean, that's an obvious one to say, but always do a spell check before. Uh, most CMS or HTML editors automatically spell check, um, but just double check it just in case because you don't want crawlers to misinterpret 
uh, images based on the alt text, especially if the if the um, <laughs> if the spelling uh, completely changes the meaning of it. Remember to skip alt text for decorative images. It doesn't just because you have an image on the web page, it doesn't mean you have to have an alt text on there. It depends on how the image is used. So if it's like a background image um, or just purely decorative, like a border or something like that, that that isn't relevant for the user reading the content, then you don't really need alt text for that. Um, or if the image already has been described within the content that's next to it or underneath or above it, don't really need to because Google will keep that in mind. Um, it's more for accessibility though. So if even though you describe it above and below, um, it would be good for accessibility reasons to have that alt text there. So thanks so much for watching this video. If you have any other questions, please let us know. And also check out Hike SEO because in Hike, um, it's a great platform for beginners, small business owners, and agencies to basically be empowered with your SEO, take control of your SEO, and it's really easy to get started. Um, and images can also be flagged up in its action engine um, to see what you can do to improve your image SEO. So definitely check it out. Uh, just go to hikeseo.co. And for more videos like this, check out uh, Hike's YouTube channel. And for articles, check out Hike's Learn SEO Hub at hikeseo.co slash learn. All right, I'll see you guys soon. Take care.